Prologue Carlin Culpepper leaned forward in his chair, resting his elbows on the kitchen table as he scrubbed his hands over his face. He looked at his brothers, all of whom looked as defeated as he felt. Why would Grandpa do this to us? Cooper shrugged. He's been on all of us to marry for the last five years. I don't think any of us should really be surprised by this. Well, I know. But to force us to marry? To keep the ranch we grew up on? There's no way I'm going to let Travis inherit it. He hated coming here even when we were kids. Remember? And no matter what, he's always going to get a tenth of the profits from the ranch unless we sell. Like we'd ever sell. Of course, he could get a fifth of the profits if he worked with us, but we all know we'd rather he didn't work the ranch with us. Colby shook his head. He always refused to help with chores. He spent all this time on his stupid Game Boy. He was afraid of horses. Carlin sighed. Well, I really don't think we have a choice. The will said for the four of us to inherit this ranch, we need to all be married within a year. And one of us needs to have a wife who's knocked up. Their mother walked over and set drinks on the table for them. Be a little less vulgar about it, Linda said as she walked away. Carlin glared at his mother as she walked off. One of our wives will need to be in the family way. Is that better, mother? Yes. Chris, the youngest of the four brothers, shook his head. So how on earth are we going to find four women to move out here in the middle of nowhere and marry us? All the girls that were raised around here are married to those stupid underwear models. All of the brothers knew what he was talking about. Two years before, some idiot had come up with the bright idea to shoot underwear advertisements at a neighboring ranch. When the girls in town had heard that there were hot male models running around in just their underwear, they all volunteered to help out. A freak spring blizzard had broken out, trapping everyone at the ranch, and there had been a lot of quick weddings after. And a whole lot of babies born nine months later. Culpepper had always been a ranching community, so there weren't a whole lot of girls who stuck around anyway. They moved off somewhere where they could get a job and now it seemed the ones who stayed married underwear models. Carlin shrugged. I guess we're going to have to join some kind of online dating service or something. No, it's going to have to be more severe than that. I think we're going to have to get a matchmaker involved. There aren't any girls anywhere close enough. Cooper looked disgusted by the idea. A matchmaker? What year do you think this is? Carlin asked sarcastically. I knew a guy in college who I've kinda kept in touch with. A couple years ago, he did a website for this matchmaker woman, and she ended up matching him up with his wife. They've got a kid, and they're really happy. Chris didn't look excited by the idea of seeing a matchmaker, but at least he seemed to feel like they could do it. Really? See if you can get her name for me. Wonder if we can just have her ship four girls out here and we can pick from them. I don't think she works that way. Trey said that she introduced them at the altar. Colby jumped to his feet. No way. I'm not marrying some random stranger. I need to at least know if I like her first. Carlin rubbed the back of his neck. Chris, just get the number for me. I'll call her. I'll see what we can do. He really didn't want to do something so desperate, but he couldn't imagine living anywhere other than the ranch. Culpepper, Wyoming, was their home. They couldn't lose it. Chapter 1 Dr. Lachiel Simpson got out of her rental SUV and pushed her purple hair back over her shoulder before walking up to the entrance of the large Wyoming ranch house. The door was opened before she had the chance to knock. A middle-aged woman with short blonde hair and green eyes opened the door. Are you Dr. Simpson? Lachiel nodded. Yes. Please call me Dr. Lachiel, everyone does. I'm Linda Culpepper. Her gaze went past Lachiel's shoulder to the rental vehicle. I can't believe you got a dented car for a rental. Oh, it wasn't dented when I got into it. 
That happened because I was talking to the rental agency girl and backed into a pole in the parking garage at the airport. It's a good thing I always get the extra insurance. Linda simply nodded, opening the door wide to let Lachiel into her home. Do you have trouble with rental cars often? Before closing the door, Linda looked once more at the dented car, shaking her head. Dr. Lachiel shrugged. I tend to have trouble keeping dents off everything I drive. My husband just laughs. I never hurt myself, because they're always low-speed collisions, because I'm not paying attention. Maybe you should start paying attention. Oh, I'm sure I should. Will I? Probably not. Lachiel looked around for the men she was there to see. Are your sons here? They're all out on the ranch. I'm supposed to text as soon as you get here, and they'll come right home. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but they couldn't spend the day sitting around. There's always work to be done on a ranch. Linda led the way to the huge living area. Can I get you anything to drink while you wait? Lachiel nodded. Sweet tea would be great if you have some. I do. I'm a Texas girl born and raised. We're required to have sweet tea at all times. Linda hurried to the kitchen to get two glasses of iced tea while Lachiel sat down on the couch and waited. Linda handed Lachiel her glass and sat down opposite her. Thank you for coming all this way. I know this isn't how you usually do things. Lachiel frowned. It's not. I travel all the time to interview people. It's the idea of choosing four women for four men that's strange to me. Usually before I send a woman out, I have everything planned. I even help plan most of these weddings. I certainly don't leave the matchmaking to chance. But I'll be here supervising everything. There will be no hanky-panky going on under my roof. Lachiel laughed. More than anything, I want to make sure the girls are provided for. I'm here to interview your sons and put them through my rigorous testing, but before I even start that, we're going to get some ground rules set. That sounds fair to me. Do you want me around for this discussion? Or do you want me to make myself scarce? Lachiel thought about that for a moment. I think I want you to stay. I want you to know the rules that I'm giving the boys, so that you can help me enforce them. I have a feeling they listen to you. Not as much as I'd like. Linda frowned. Lachiel laughed. I have a son too. I don't think they ever listen. Did you only have boys? Yes, I always hoped for a daughter, but my husband died before I had any. Linda smiled. I love my boys more than anything. Lachiel looked at her watch. How long before the boys get here? Linda laughed. They'd get here a lot quicker if I actually texted them. She pulled her phone from her pocket and quickly texted them all. So sorry about that. That's what happens when you're my age. Your mind starts to go. Oh, I know. I think it's the hormones. Lachiel laughed. That's gotta be it. She liked Linda. She had one of those personalities that everyone liked. Are you going to stay here while you're in town? Carlin told me the testing would take several days. I made a reservation at the hotel in town, but if you don't mind, I'll stay here. I drove past and it looked a little scary. I think you and I would make great friends. Oh, I know we would. Both women turned and looked at the door when they heard it open. Lachiel patted her chest as four sexy cowboys walked into the house. She looked at Linda. You did good. Linda laughed. I'm pretty proud of them. As they filed into the room and sat down, Linda introduced each of them. She indicated each man as he sat down. That's Carlin, he's my oldest. He's the mayor of Culpeper, as well as being in charge of this ranch. Next comes Cooper, he's more the foreman around here. Then we have Colby. He's Cooper's right-hand man. And youngest is Chris. Chris is our black sheep. 
During the school year, he's a traveling science teacher. He goes to the different homeschool families and teaches chemistry and physics. And why does that make him a black sheep? Lachiel asked. Carlin raised an eyebrow. Because he's a science nerd instead of a rancher. He helps out around his other stuff. Lachiel grinned. She took a sip of her iced tea before starting the conversation she needed to have with the men. Before I even start the testing, I want to make it clear that we'll be doing things my way. If I'm going to send girls out here to spend time with you, taking them away from their lives, I need a guarantee of marriage. I'm going to ask you all to sign a contract that states if one of the women isn't married within a month of coming here, she shall be compensated $10,000 to start over somewhere else. Do any of you have any arguments with that? The men squirmed as they looked at each other. I don't think so, Carlin said, the spokesman for the others. According to Grandpa's will, we're required to get married within six months. And one of us has to have a wife who is expecting within a year. Lachiel jotted down a quick note. So you need brides who are willing to have babies right off. I'll make sure of that with my questions to them. Second provision is that you have to stay together for one year. I'd rather you let me choose which bride is for each of you, but I won't require that. Carlin frowned. I know that's how you usually do business. I appreciate you making an exception for us. Is there anything else we need to know before we get started on the testing? No. Those are the only special rules I am making for you. I do want to make sure that the girls stay in this house with your mother until you are married. Don't you boys be trying to lure those girls back to your own houses. She'd been told from the beginning that each of the men had their own house on the ranch. No, ma'am. We're too afraid of our mama for that. You sound like smart men. So, who wants to be tested first? I'll go first. I'm the oldest, so I'll be the guinea pig. Carlin got to his feet. Do you want to do it here? Or back at my place? Lachiel looked at Linda. Do you mind if we do it here? Linda shook her head. Not at all. Why don't you two work here in the living room, and I'll go get started making lunch. The rest of you boys can scatter. Come back in an hour for lunch. Lachiel watched as the younger three boys followed their mother's orders. She liked this family already. Asterisk. Lachiel checked into the hotel the girls had told her she should go to. She wasn't sure why they wanted her to meet them in a hotel rather than in their home, but she was willing. Her cell phone rang as she walked into her room. She didn't bother to check the number as she swept her finger across the screen and put the phone to her ear. This is Lachiel. This is Hope Quinlan. Are you here? Yes, I'm on the third floor in 352. I have a suite, so come on up. She pulled her suitcase into the bedroom and closed the door. The suite was huge. There were two bedrooms and a large sitting area. There was even a small kitchen. It would be the perfect place for her to entertain the sisters while she put them through her rigorous testing. She put the drinks and snacks she'd purchased away and walked to the door of the suite. She opened it and saw four young ladies, the one in front with her hand ready to knock. You must be the Quinlan sisters. I'm Dr. Lachiel. The girl in the front, a pretty, slim, blonde smiled. I'm Hope. Lachiel opened the door wide. Come in. I can't wait to get started. The girls filed into the room. Have a seat. Do you want anything to drink? Hope, who seemed to be the spokesperson for all of them, shook her head. We just stopped and got something to eat about an hour ago. I think we're all set for a while. Lachiel sat down in a big, comfortable chair. Well, let's get down to business then. Tell me why you're interested in finding men this way. Hope exchanged looks with her sisters. Let me start by introducing everyone. This is my sister Joy, that is Faith, and over there is Chastity. She pointed to each sister as she spoke. 
We're something of a novelty in our town. We're the only quadruplets who have ever lived there. Lachiel frowned. And you want to get away from being famous? Joy shrugged. In a way. We live in a tiny, little town. We can't blow our noses without someone telling our parents about it. There are six girls in our family, and we all have these ridiculous names. It's like we're part of the trick pony show. We're expected to march in every parade. And none of us are allowed to get jobs. Our father thinks that would make us unladylike. We all have college degrees, but we're not allowed to use them. Our father said the only thing we were allowed to get degrees in was homemaking. Mama called it getting our MS Hope crossed her ankles and folded her hands in her lap. Lachiel frowned. But you're not allowed to work? Of course not. Daddy says he makes enough money that none of us should ever work. Our jobs are finding husbands. He doesn't realize that all the boys in town think of us as such an oddity that nobody's willing to ever ask us out. Not that he'd let us go. We're supposed to find husbands who are willing to court us, not date us, and are willing to do all of this under his watchful eye. Hope shrugged. And how do you feel about that? Joy shook her head. We all want to be independent. We've just never been allowed to be. That's why we want to get away more than anything. We want to be able to live our lives the way we want to live. Not constantly under someone else's scrutiny. Lachiel nodded. I can understand that. How do you feel about having children right away? Hope smiled. I love kids. I want at least a dozen. If I could have one in my arms tomorrow, I'd be thrilled. Okay, good. The men I have in mind for you four are asking for something different than I've ever done. They want me to send four women, and then they would be able to choose from the women sent. I'm making special provisions for this. The four of you would live with their mother. They'd be required to marry you within a month, or they would have to pay you $10,000 apiece for relocation costs. There would be my normal contract to sign that requires you to stay together for at least a year. The sisters exchanged looks. Finally, Chastity asked, what if they want some of us and not all of us? Then some of you marry and some of you won't. Is that a problem? Chastity shrugged. I guess not. We've never really been separated before. Faith frowned. I can't imagine some of us staying there and some of us moving away. Lachiel looked between them. Well, if two of you end up marrying the brothers, the other two would have $20,000. You could put down roots right there in town and marry someone else there, still staying close. That seemed to relieve all of them. So how do we get started? Hope asked nervously. I'll interview each of you. The tests take hours. Are you all staying the night here in the hotel? Yes, ma'am, Hope replied. Our parents know we're here in Paducah for the weekend. We told them we were going to the wedding of a college friend and needed to stay in town. So you're hiding this from your parents? Lachiel wasn't sure how she felt about that. For now we are, Joy told her. If we end up going, we'll tell them. If you knew our parents, you'd understand. Lachiel shrugged. Your lives. Who wants to go first? Hope raised a hand. I will. This is scary enough as it is. I should go first, so my sisters will know it's okay. Lachiel smiled. I promise, it's not that rough. I'm just going to ask questions. I want to make sure I feel like you're each right for one of the brothers. Joy leaned forward. What do you want us to do? Should we leave? Lachiel shrugged. I'll be taking turns asking all of you questions for a while. I'd rather you stuck close. Is there shopping you'd like to do close by? Or you could always go hang out in your room or watch the boob tube in one of the bedrooms. Faith stood up. There's a doll shop near here that I want to wander around in. They have some cute furniture. 
Joy and Chastity jumped up to walk with their sister. We'll be back before too long, Chastity said. We just love looking at dolls. When the three had left, Lachiel looked at Hope. Your sisters are odd. How do you think they'd be with our parents? It hasn't been easy growing up with absolutely no freedom. Here we are, 22 years old, and I think Chastity is the only one of us who has ever even kissed a boy. Well, Faith may have. She's hard to read sometimes. Lachiel made a quick note on her pad. So tell me, why do you want to marry? Hope sighed. I don't want to spend the rest of my life alone, and that's where I'm headed if I don't get out of town. My parents are going to keep us in a gilded cage forever. I'm not letting that happen. Lachiel smiled and patted Hope's hand. Don't give up Hope. Or should that be, don't give up, Hope? Either way I guess. Lachiel cackled softly at her own joke. Hope just shook her head. She was used to jokes about her ridiculous name. If she had been the only one with a name like that, it would have been no big deal. She was just glad their mother hadn't had more daughters. Why, patience and charity would have been entirely too much. Asterisk. Carlin pulled his gelding, Mr. Ed, to a stop when he heard his cell phone ring. Culpepper. Mr. Culpepper, this is Lachiel Simpson. He took off his black hat and towed the sweat seeping down his chest. It was an unusually hot day for April. Tell me you have good news for us, Dr. Lachiel. I do. Lachiel laughed at that. I sound like I'm the one getting married instead of you and your brothers. Carlin rolled his eyes. You sure do. Maybe if he humored the woman, she would answer his questions. I found four sisters who were willing to move to Culpepper as your brides. He swallowed hard. As much as it was what he wanted, he couldn't believe she'd actually done it. Sounds good. When will they be arriving? They'll all be there a week from Saturday. They'll be driving out together. I'll let the others know. Mom will be thrilled to have other women around. I'm sure she will. I'll be there Saturday as well to introduce you all, but I'll rent a car and drive in from the airport. I want to make sure the first time you meet goes smoothly. Dr. Lachiel paused for a moment. You know what? I'll be there Friday. Tell Linda I'd like to stay with her again. If that's a problem, have her give me a call. She has my number. Yes, ma'am. I'll let her know. Thank you. Remember, you all have to be married within a month, or you settle $10,000 on every unmarried sister. Carlin closed his eyes for a moment. I couldn't forget that. He ended the call and rode out to where his brothers were working together to repair a fence on one of their biggest pastures. Cooper looked up from twisting some barbed wire fence around a nail, his thick gloves protecting his hands. You're late. They'd all agreed to be back at one, to finish the fence. Carlin wanted to retort that they'd all been late a time or two, but with Cooper, it just wasn't true. He was never late for anything. I got a call about that stoplight some folks are wanting to put in on Main St. Half the city council thinks it's a great idea and the other half is dead set against it. Then, as I was riding back, I got a call from Dr. Lachiel. He waited as all six eyes from his brothers landed on him. Yeah, that Dr. Lachiel. Colby glared. Why are you making us wait? Did she find someone? She found four sisters. They'll be here a week from Saturday. And Dr. Lachiel is coming back to stay with Mom on Friday. Why is she coming back? Chris asked. Chris wasn't actually allowed to help with any of the physical work, but they let him hand them nails and stuff. He just got in the way otherwise. Carlin shrugged. She said she wants to be here when we meet the women. He rubbed the back of his neck nervously. I'm not sure I'm ready to meet someone and marry her that fast. Colby shrugged. It's just marriage. We marry them. 
We have sex with them. We have babies. Will is fulfilled. Carlin shook his head. Women are always so much more than you give them credit for, little brother. Cooper frowned. They're going to get us all off schedule. You know they will. Chris clapped Cooper on his back. Something needs to get you off schedule. Better a woman than anything else. It was Monday, and a school holiday, so he was home helping his brothers. He worked every day the school calendar called for, even though he only worked for homeschooled families. For some strange reason, the homeschooled families in the area always followed the school calendar. None of them understood it, but they accepted it. Carlin sighed. Let's get this fence done. I'm going to text mom really quick and let her know we'll all be there for dinner. She needs to know the girls are coming. She's going to want to change the sheets. No one slept on them since she changed them last. Colby protested. Like that's going to matter to mom. These are her future daughters-in-law. She's going to welcome them with open arms. Aren't women supposed to hate their daughters-in-law? Chris asked. We're talking about mom. She'll make them all quilts and welcome them into the family. Carlin shook his head. Their mother was going to be so happy to not be the only woman on the ranch, she wasn't going to be able to contain herself. They worked together through the afternoon with a minimum of words, each brother, thinking about the woman he'd be marrying. Carlin thought maybe they'd have been smarter to let Dr. Lachille pair them off. She was the expert, after all. Chapter 2 Hope was tired of her sisters. Well, only the ones that were with her. She wanted to pull her Chevy Equinox over to the side of the road and insist all three of them get out of the car. I need to pee, Chastity said for the fiftieth time since they'd left the hotel that morning. I said we'd stop as soon as I see a place worth stopping. Do you want to go in a field? Hope asked, the edge in her voice, more obvious than she would like. Why didn't you go, before we left when I said to go? I didn't have to go then. I need to go now. Chastity complained. Hope spotted a tiny gas station off to the right and pulled in. Here you go. I hope they've cleaned that thing in the last fifteen years. At this point, I just can't care. Chastity yelled as she wrenched the door open and ran for the station to get a key. Hope leaned forward to rest her head on the steering wheel. It was their third day on the road, and they were only about a hundred miles from their destination. According to the GPS, they'd be there before lunchtime. Well, if Chastity didn't keep making them stop. Do you want me to drive? Joy asked, her voice soft and understanding. Hope shook her head. I've got it. I'll do better driving, because then I can't safely wrap my hands around Chastity's neck. Faith sighed. At least you don't have to sit in the back seat with her. Listening to the two of you argue is making me crazy, Hope said. Please don't touch her again or do anything that will set her off. I need to feel sane when we arrive and meet the men. Did you say Dr. Lachille will be there when we arrive? Joy asked, trying to change the subject smoothly. Hope nodded. She said she would be. She said something about becoming good friends with the men's mother. It's all going to be all right, Faith said softly. Sorry about the bickering. I think we're all ready to be done with this car and meet the men. It's nerve-wracking sitting back here, wondering when we'll meet the men of our dreams. I understand, Hope muttered. I'm just tired, and we're all tense. Chastity opened the door. That bathroom was disgusting. I had to make a seat out of toilet paper, because my butt was not going to touch that gross potty. Hope looked over at Joy and then into the rearview mirror at Faith. I'm not stopping again. If anyone needs a drink, a snack, a toilet, now is the time. I swear, if I'm asked to pull over again, I might just hurt someone. I'm going to go get a couple bottles of water then, Chastity said, reaching for the door handle. No. 
Faith and Joy yelled at the same time. Joy was quick and locked the door so no one could get out. Go, Hope. If she gets water, she's going to need to pee in three minutes, and we're all going to end up in jail for sororicide. Hope stepped on the gas, peeling out of the gravel parking lot much quicker than she should have. She didn't say a word as she pulled back onto the two-lane highway and pointed the car toward Culpepper. If they didn't reach the ranch soon, and she didn't get away from all of her sisters, but especially chastity, she would hurt someone. It was not a good situation. As they drove, Joy talked quietly, trying to keep everyone calm. She'd always been the peacemaker among them. I hope my yarn gets there this week. Are the twins sending your kiln? She asked Faith. When they'd agreed to move to Wyoming, they'd had just under a week to pack everything they could. Every day, the twins would distract their mother while their older sisters would sneak away to the post office with packages they mailed to themselves in Wyoming. They'd spent thousands on mailing things, and they had been careful not to mail anything that would seem to be missing. It was crazy they had to sneak away at 22 years old, but what could they do? Faith was a doll sculptor and had begun a business that no one really knew about. Well, no one except them and a few others. They'd had to keep their business a secret from their parents, which was one of the reasons they wanted out of Kentucky. Yeah, they're supposed to ship the kiln soon. I can't wait till I have my own workspace set up. Her voice sounded sad at the words, which surprised Hope. Faith loved her work. I'm expecting my yarn soon. I shipped it before we left. I'm glad we were able to bring your sewing machine, Hope. Joy sounded excited. I brought along enough of my yarn and plastic canvas for a few rooms full of furniture. She made plastic canvas Barbie doll furniture, and she had for years. She'd always found some little girl to give it to, but she'd always thought she could make a killing if she did it for a living. Hope nodded. I was thinking of making a selection of outfits that could be purchased separately from the baby dolls. I would have a little orange pumpkin outfit for Halloween, complete with an orange and green stem hat. I would do a red and white Santa outfit for Christmas. A bunny outfit for Easter. A green outfit with a leprechaun hat for St. Patrick's Day. I think it could be a lot of fun. Faith leaned forward, excited. That sounds incredible. How much do you think it would cost to buy enough fabric to make all of those outfits? Hope thought for a moment. Well, I'd buy each fabric in bulk, of course. We're probably looking at the outfits costing us about two or three dollars each. I think a set of six would be sold together. We could sell them for about sixty dollars? Do you think? Faith asked. As always, when she thought about her doll business, she got very excited. Hope nodded. She was the money girl. She was the only one of the six of them that could understand a spreadsheet without bursting into tears. I think that would be good. I could crank them out pretty quickly after the first set. I think that's brilliant. I just wish Honor was here to make the cradles. Faith's voice was filled with sadness. Chastity frowned. We're going to have to find a way for Honor and Grace to join us here. Surely there are other men in town who need brides. Hope sighed. As annoyed as she was with her sisters, the six of them had always been a unit. We need to get them out from under mom and dad's rule. I wonder how mad they were when Grace gave them our letter. Hope said, a frown on her face. Has anyone talked to her yet? I talked to her last night, Chastity said. She said they were mad, but glad we were finally getting married. She was told to remind us not to let them kiss us before the wedding. Hope rolled her eyes. If I'm going to think about marrying someone, I'm going to kiss him. What if he drools? Chastity sighed, contentedly. Just think. In another month, none of us will be virgins. Sex, sex, sex. Hope tuned the others out at those words. Chastity was off on her favorite subject as usual, 
and she had no desire to listen to her sex-crazed sister. An hour later, Hope turned the car into a long driveway at a sign that read, Culpepper Ranch. She smiled to herself. In a month, or hopefully sooner, she'd be married to one of the Culpepper cowboys. Her heart beat faster as she realized she was minutes from meeting her future husband. Stopping the car in front of the large white house, she put it into park. She stared at the house for a moment, wondering if they'd all lost their minds. It didn't take a minute for the front door to burst open, and Dr. Lachille rushed out of the house, an older blonde woman behind her. Hope took a deep breath and got out of the SUV, thrilled to be able to finally stand up. She rushed forward to hug Dr. Lachille. Hope, it's great to see you again, Dr. Lachille said, hugging Hope tightly. This is my friend, Linda Culpepper. She's going to be your mother-in-law. Hope was almost afraid to meet the woman. There were so many bad stories circulating about mothers-in-law, and Hope hadn't exactly had an easy time with mother figures anyway. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Culpepper. The blonde woman shook her head, reaching out to hug Hope. Call me Linda. One by one, Lachille introduced the other three sisters to Linda. I just texted Carlin so the boys can come in for lunch and meet you ladies. Are they working today? Hope asked, pushing her shoulder-length blonde hair back from her face. Linda nodded. They're always working. It's part of owning a ranch. You'll learn. I see. Hope opened up the hatchback of the vehicle and started to grab her bags. Leave them. You've driven too far to carry your own bags in. Besides, my boys have manners, and they'll do it as soon as they get here. Linda linked her arms with Hope and Faith, walking toward the house with them. You girls are going to stay with me in the big house until the weddings happen. I hope you'll each find one of my boys to be perfect for you. I have suggestions for each of you if you want to hear them, Dr. Lachille told them. Hope looked at the psychologist with surprise. You do? Dr. Lachille nodded. I have one of the men in mind for each of you. Would you like to know the one I think you should marry? Hope nodded. I would. She wished the matchmaker had set things up the way she usually did. She didn't want to have to go through the initial meeting and feeling uncomfortable stage. Maybe she was crazy, but she liked the idea of meeting at the altar. We'll talk after lunch then. I want all of you to meet all four of them, before I taint your mind with my opinions. Hope sighed. Yes, ma'am. She looked at Linda. How can we help with lunch? Linda shook her head. You've been driving for three days. You girls need to take a minute to just decompress before my boys are all forced on you. She led them to the living room. You can wait here, or there's a big back porch, if you'd prefer. Hope smiled. I like the idea of the back porch, but before I go, may I ask you one question? Linda nodded. Sure. Where are you from? Your voice doesn't sound like Wyoming to me. Oh, I'm from Wiggyville, Texas. I moved here after the boy's father died to keep house for my father-in-law. Wiggyville? That's a strange name for a town. Linda laughed. Actually, it was named after one of my ancestors. I'll tell you the whole story later. I've always thought I wanted my grandma name to be Wiggy. Hope tilted her head to one side. Wiggy? Well, it's different, but if that's what you want, I don't see why not. Hope walked toward the back door Linda had indicated, needing a few minutes in the quiet of the countryside. She found a wooden porch swing off to one side, and she sank into it, staring out at the vast expanse of open land. She wondered how far the Culpepper Ranch extended. Would this place really be her home for the rest of her life? She leaned her head back and closed her eyes, listening to the quiet country sounds. She could hear a cow mooing in the distance, crickets chirping, birds singing softly to one another. Why, she could even hear the quiet balking of chickens. 
After a moment the sound of horses' hooves riding toward her and then stopping filled the air. She slowly opened her eyes to see a man throw his leg over the side of his horse and dismount, tying off his reins on the porch. Hi. Hope stared at him, her heart jumping into her throat. Never had she reacted so strongly to a man at first meeting. She laughed to herself softly. The truth was, she'd never reacted strongly to a man at all. She wasn't sure she possessed the type of emotions that it took for love, but she hoped she did. Hi. I'm Hope. I'm Carlin. I'm the oldest of the four brothers. Mayor of Culpeper, Wyoming. I'm Hope Quinlan. Oldest of the Quinlan quadruplets. Hope made a face. She hated being a quad. Why had she introduced herself that way? Wait. I knew we were marrying sisters, but quadruplets? Really? Carlin walked over and sank down onto the swing beside her, setting the swing into motion with the kick of his boot. Really? And our names are godawful too. I'm Hope, and my sisters are Faith, Joy, and Chastity. Is she really? Is who really what? Is Chastity really chaste? Hope laughed. I sure wouldn't swear to it. That girl is, well, you'll see in a minute or two. Carlin looked down at the pretty girl beside him. She was wearing a jean skirt and a long buttoned-up shirt which was untucked. Her hair was shoulder-length, which to him was the only thing that kept her from looking like a Bible thumper. I'm not sure I care too much about meeting her. I think I've found my prize already. Carlin was shocked to hear the words come out of his mouth. He'd never come on so strongly with a woman, but he'd also never met one and felt his ding-a-ling immediately jump in his pants. Why he felt so much after a moment's acquaintance, he wasn't sure. Would he feel the same for her sisters? Were they identical? You may not think that after you meet the others. There are four of us after all. And four of us. Are you identical? She shook her head. No. Thank God. We look like we're sisters, for sure, but we're easily told apart. We have younger sisters who are twins, and they're fraternal as well. She was certain she was babbling, but she'd never been left alone with a man before, and especially not one who made her feel things. Carlin studied her face, glad they were close enough that he could see the small flecks of brown in her green eyes. May I kiss you? Hope blinked a few times, surprised that he would ask that so soon after meeting. I don't know. Do you think that would be right? Would it be weird if I ended up marrying one of your brothers, and you married one of my sisters and we'd kissed? He grinned. No, but I don't plan on marrying anyone but you, darling Dot. He leaned forward and gently brushed his lips against hers. His hand moved to cup her cheek. Hope felt the passion shoot through her into her belly. She let out a gasp and parted her lips, kissing him back. She'd always hoped it was possible for her to have these feelings for a man, and now here she was, enjoying a kiss. She scooted closer to him, her hand going to the back of his neck. His tongue traced her lip, and she sighed happily. Her hand stroked the strong muscles of his neck and moved down to his shoulders. This wasn't a man who sat behind a desk pushing papers around all day. This was a real man. It was all she could do not to climb onto his lap. Carlin lifted his head, tapping her on the nose with his index finger. Marry me. I'm staking my claim before my brother see you. I, uh, we haven't known each other for five minutes. Hope, you just drove 1,300 miles to marry one of four strangers. Let it be me. Hope slowly nodded, a smile creeping across her face. Yes, I'll marry you. She wasn't certain why she felt so shy as she said it, but she did. She was glad she'd finished her wedding dress before leaving Kentucky. They could get married as soon as Wyoming laws would allow. Carlin grinned, hugging her to him. Let's go tell the others. Shouldn't we wait until tonight or something? Why? 
you've agreed to be mine, and I'm ready to shout it from the rooftops. He wasn't even sure why he was so drawn to her, but he was. He wanted this one, not one of her sisters. Hope, well, she gave him hope. Hope for their ranch, and hope for his future. He could imagine spending long winter nights making love with her in front of a fire. Yeah, she was definitely the girl he'd been looking for. Hope nodded slowly, not sure if her sisters would be angry that she'd already gotten engaged to one of them before they even had a chance to meet him. She was used to being a self-sacrificing woman, so it felt weird not to let her sisters choose, and she would take the runt of the litter. Oh, she wanted him though. Carlin stood and held a hand down for Hope, keeping her hand in his as they walked in through the back door of his mother's house. As soon as he'd closed the door behind him, he announced, I'm marrying Hope. Linda looked up from the ham she was carving. Well, that was quick. Why am I not surprised? She hurried around the counter and hugged Hope. Welcome to the family. Hope felt her sister's stares and for a moment thought about apologizing. Why should she? It wasn't her fault that Carlin had seen her and immediately wanted to marry her. She had a right to be happy, didn't she? Carlin was still holding Hope's hand, and as soon as his mother released her, he brought it to his lips. Dr. Lachille hurried over to them, a big grin on her face. I would have put you two together. There's no waiting period for a wedding in Wyoming. Hope felt as if her heart was about to beat out of her chest. No waiting period? Not even three days? There's no waiting period in Kentucky, either, Joy reminded her. Hope felt like the world was spinning out of control. She turned to Carlin. So, we'll get married in three weeks or so? That seemed like a reasonable period of time to wait. After all, her first kiss had been just minutes before. Carlin shook his head, a smile touching his lips. Today. That way you don't have to unpack more than once. She put her hand to her throat. Today, she squeaked out. Carlin nodded slowly. Why wait? You came here to marry one of us. Hope pulled him toward the back door. She had to talk through this or she was going to have a panic attack right there in front of everyone. She hated when that happened. Once the door was closed, she turned to him, struggling for the right words. I did agree to marry one of you upon my arrival, but I thought I'd have a little more time to get to know you first. My first kiss was with you ten minutes ago. I can't, well, you know. He shook his head, being deliberately obtuse. No, I don't know. What can't you do? She closed her eyes, saying a silent prayer for help. I can't sleep with a man I don't know. I need a couple of weeks before I'm ready for that. He chuckled. I can give you some time. I just want to get that knot tied nice and tight before any of my brothers get the chance to know you a little better. Hope couldn't believe her ears. She opened one eye to see if he was serious. Really? You'll give me time? Carlin used the hand he still held to pull her toward him. Absolutely. I just like the idea of you living with me. I have three bedrooms. We don't even have to share a bed to start with. I don't want to have to play the courting game under mom's watchful eyes, though. If we decide we're ready, we won't have to rush for the preacher because we'll already be man and wife. And besides, he was pretty sure he could talk her into his bed within a couple of days, if not that night. Hope nodded slowly. Let's get married today then. I'd like a church wedding. Or at least to get married by a pastor. Our pastor from town will do it. He looked into her eyes, thinking. How would you feel about getting married right here in my mom's backyard? I'd love to marry here on the ranch. She nodded slowly. She had her wedding dress after all. Later this afternoon? It was just afternoon. If they married around four, she'd have time to shower and get ready. Sounds perfect. Let me call Brother Anthony. 
Carlin watched her sit back down on the porch swing as he pulled out his phone, dialing the pastor of his church. He had the man on speed dial, because Cooper had insisted they all put him on speed dial before the women arrived. He didn't want anything to slow down their weddings. Brother Anthony. Carlin Culpepper. Are you free this afternoon? After a three-minute conversation that made Carlin's head spin, he had the man agreeing to be there at four for a wedding. Yes, of course, you can bring your wife. Miss Lovan is always welcome. He clicked off the phone and took her hand pulling her to her feet. You ready for this? Hope shook her head emphatically. Of course not. But I'll manage. She stood on her toes and brushed her lips against his. I am happy I'm marrying you. Carlin grinned. Me, too. Let's go eat lunch. He took her hand and pulled her back into the house, thinking about kissing her later and not having to stop. Well, not unless she put the brakes on things, and he was pretty certain he could convince her that she'd look great wearing nothing but him. Every eye was on them as they stepped into the room. Hope saw that her sisters had seemed to pair off with the Culpepper men. Chastity was trailing her fingers up and down someone's arm as if she wanted to drag him off to the bedroom and have her way with him. Hope said a quick prayer that her sister would hold off until after their vows were spoken. Or if she didn't, that she would pretend to hold off. If her sister was going to screw the man before the wedding, she didn't want to know about it. Carlin took advantage of everyone's attention. I just talked to Brother Anthony, and we're getting married this afternoon at four. I hope you'll all attend. The last was said with an impish grin. Today? Linda asked, her voice full of surprise. But how can you have a reception if you do it today? Why don't we do a joint reception for all four couples after the last one gets married? Carlin asked. It'll save money and time. We can't all afford to take off a full day every week for a month. Linda threw her hands up. The ranch is the most important thing in the world. Don't worry. I won't forget again. Hope suddenly felt at home. The sarcasm, which had never been apparent in her parents' house in Kentucky, warmed her from the insides. How could it not? She knew then she'd made the right decision by coming here and by agreeing to marry the man beside her. She squeezed his hand, hoping he'd understand her silent communication. Chapter 3 Linda volunteered her room for the girls to get ready in. It had a huge master bath that was perfect for the four girls, who were helped by Lachiel. Hope shivered as her sisters helped her slip her wedding dress over her head. She'd chosen this dress for a faceless man, who was so much more than she'd expected. All of the Culpepper men were huge, strapping cowboy types. But Carlin in her mind, was the biggest, the strongest, the smartest, and the most handsome, all at once. Linda was off helping the boys ready themselves, which made Hope sad. She would have liked to pepper her with questions about her oldest son. He's the one I would have chosen for you, Lachiel said softly. You picked well. Hope smiled at that. He just seems right. When he sat down beside me, I felt more for him than I'd ever felt for another man. She didn't add that she'd spent her entire life thinking she was frigid. That she'd never feel the sexual excitement for a man she should. Chastity sighed. I can't believe you get to have sex tonight. I wish it was me. Hope looked at her sister. You want to have sex with Carlin? Well, he'd do, but I'd sure prefer Chris. Have you seen that man? The sexiest of all of our Culpepper cowboys. Chastity had a faraway look on her face. Don't sneak away to have sex with him, Chastity. Wait till you're married. Please. Lachiel grinned as she observed the four sisters. Chastity sat on the bed mooning over Chris, a man she'd known for merely hours. Hope was in her wedding dress, looking more nervous than she'd ever seen a bride look. Faith was calm as she calmly did Hope's makeup, as if she were working on one of her doll's faces. 
Joy was detached, observing the others as if she felt as if she'd need to jump in to referee at any moment. The Culpepper Cowboys didn't know what they were in for. Asterisk. Why are you in such a hurry to marry her, Carlin? Colby asked. You'd think you'd want to get to know her a little bit first. Carlin shrugged, not wanting to admit that he was trying to take her out of the running so none of his brothers could get to know her before she was married to him. She seems like the right one for me. Why wait? Chris frowned. I think chastity's the one for me, but I'm not marrying her today. No, sorry. I'll wait as long as I can to make sure she's just right. Colby shrugged. I think I want to marry Joy but I want to spend a little time with all of them first, just to be sure. Joy is tugging at me, but they're all gorgeous. Why should I pick today? Linda shook her head at them all, pinning sticky geraniums to each of their lapels. If you'd let me have even a day's notice, we could have had carnations. Carlin shook his head. Does it matter what kind of flower we have? Carnations are more traditional. They'd have looked better. Cooper shook his head. I think this makes their wedding unique. When I marry Faith, we'll have carnations, so you can get your carnation wedding in. Don't worry about that, Mom. Linda looked at Carlin. Speaking of which, she's not going to have a bouquet to carry. You need to pick her flowers on the way back to my house, so she can make a bouquet of them. Carlin rubbed the back of his neck, wishing the wedding were over with. Yeah, I'll do it. They were in Carlin's living room, putting the finishing touches on their looks. All four men were freshly showered and wearing dark suits. Linda looked around at her four tall, handsome sons and sighed. I wish your dad were here to see you now. Carlin had few memories of his father, who had died when he was six. I wish he was too. Truthfully, their granddaddy had been more of a father to them than their dad had. I wish granddaddy was here too. Of course, if granddaddy was here, I sure wouldn't be marrying today. Manipulating old coot. Linda nodded. He always was a manipulator, but he loved this ranch. And you four boys. Then why did he leave the ranch in equal measures to us and cousin Travis? Why not just to the four of us? Linda shrugged. He probably felt it was only right to leave it to the five of you equally. Cousin Travis might not be your favorite person in the world, but he's your aunt's son. He has as much right to it as you four. Carlin didn't argue. His cousin had been the worst as they were growing up, but he was married now, with two kids. That had mattered a great deal to Granddaddy. He couldn't help but wonder if he and his brothers had married, if the will would have been easier for them. As they walked to the big house from Carlin's house, only about a quarter mile away, Carlin picked all the wildflowers he could find. If she didn't like some, then she didn't have to use them. His house was just far enough from hers for privacy, but still close enough they could go home for dinner every night if they felt like it. The men's homes were all about the same distance from their mother's home and from each other's, their houses making a half-circle behind her house on the ranch. Instead of going to find her, he handed his mother the fistful of flowers he'd collected once they got to the big house, and she carried them back to her bedroom. Hope, Carlin picked some flowers for you. We can make them into a bouquet. Hope stared at the flowers in Linda's hand, her face lighting up with pleasure. That's so sweet. Carlin hadn't seemed like the romantic type to her earlier, but maybe she'd read him wrong. Linda smiled, handing the flowers to Joy, who held her hand out for them. Faith was still fussing with Hope's makeup. You look beautiful, Linda said softly, her eyes filling with tears. I can't believe one of my boys is really getting married. Hope smiled, hoping her nerves didn't show on her face. All at once, she wished the rest of her family was there with her, while being glad they weren't there. Thank you for making it so easy to join your family. I've always wanted daughters. I'm excited to have one finally. Linda hurried to the mirror and brushed away the tiny bit of mascara that had run. 
I never wear makeup, except for special occasions. You don't need it, Joy told her. Linda laughed. You haven't seen me without it yet. Wait until you do. The doorbell rang then. Oh, that must be Brother Anthony and Lovan. Hurry and get ready, so you can join us. Linda rushed out of the room to go to the pastor. Lachille walked over to Hope, taking both her hands in hers. Are you nervous? Hope laughed. I'm standing here praying for the earth to open up and swallow me. I would say I'm a little nervous. Lachille laughed. He's a good man. I hope you know I've investigated him. He's a good mayor, a good businessman, and he has an incredible reputation. I couldn't find a fault in his past. I think you're going to be happy with him. Hope nodded. He seems very sweet. She was thankful for his agreement on waiting for sex. She was nervous about the wedding still, but it made it easier knowing he didn't expect that immediately. Chastity rushed from the room without a word to anyone. She probably had to pee again, Faith said, rolling her eyes. Hope laughed, feeling some of the tension ease out of her at the familiar complaint. Why can't she just go when we're stopped somewhere? Lachille looked between the sisters. Did Chastity have bladder issues on the drive here? Chastity always has bladder issues, Joy said. Next time you go on a car trip with her, you should get her a box of Depends. You could totally bling them out so she'd like them better and actually wear them. No need to stop all the time. Hope stared at the woman for a moment, not sure if she was supposed to laugh or agree with her. Thankfully, Chastity burst back into the room. I got you this for your wedding night. Chastity announced, a grin on her face. She handed Hope a white box wrapped nicely with a lavender ribbon. Hope looked at the box for a moment, afraid to open it. Should I open it now? Or later? Now. I want to see your face when you open it. Hope sighed. I was afraid you were going to say that, she mumbled. What? Chastity asked. Nothing. Hope took hold of one end of the ribbon and tugged on it, untying it. She then slid the box open and stared down at a frilly piece of red see-through lingerie. She couldn't imagine ever wearing it. Thank you, Chastity. It's lovely. Look under it. Chastity was practically bouncing up and down with her excitement. Hope was more afraid than ever as she moved the frothy piece of fabric out of the way. Oh. Dear. God. A vibrator. One that looked like it was simulating an elephant penis. The thing was enormous. Just in case, he's not good in the sack. Chastity explained, her face lit up with excitement. I appreciate it, Chastity. Thank you for thinking of me. Chastity hugged Hope. I love you so much. I hope you're happy with Carlin. Hope smiled. I'm sure I will be. Lachiel stepped forward. Sorry to interrupt, but I think it's time to get out there. The pastor's here. The men are waiting. Let's get this show on the road, ladies. Hope watched as her three sisters left the room to go out to join the men. There was no one to give her away, but that was okay. The wedding was small. She could walk herself down the aisle. How hard could it be? She hurriedly closed the box and moved it to the floor outside of Linda's bedroom. She'd get it after the wedding and not feel like she needed to ask permission to go back into Linda's room. That would be perfect. Then she just had to find a place to dispose of the gift. Too bad Faith's kiln hadn't arrived yet. She slowly walked down the hallway toward the living room, where she could hear people. As soon as she saw Carlin, standing there in a formal suit, her heart started racing. He looked good as a cowboy, but he looked just as good in his formal attire. All she could think about was going to the man, grabbing him, and kissing him silly. Of course, that led to thoughts about where kissing him silly could lead, and she started shaking. 
By the time she was at Carlin's side, she was shaking like a leaf and having to force her breathing to stay calm. Why was this so hard for her? Brother Anthony smiled at Hope. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join these two people, Carlin, and, he looked over at his wife. Lovey? What's the bride's name again? Oh, you should be able to remember that, dear. It's Hope. I hope you'll get it right. Lovan giggled behind a white handkerchief. That's right. Hope. We're gathered here to join Carlin and Hope in the state of holy matrimony. Of course, they'll still be in the state of Wyoming when they're in the state of holy matrimony. Why do they call matrimony a state? Do you know, lovey? No, but the bride is nervous, so you just keep going with the wedding, Tony. Yes, dear. He faced the couple again. Do you, Carlin, take this sweet woman to be your wife? It was obvious to hope he'd forgotten her name again. Who was this man? She couldn't wait to go to a Sunday service if he was the one preaching. He was going to be a lot more entertaining than Pastor Rick back home. Pastor Rick talked about hellfire and damnation for 60% of his sermons. The other 40% was spent picking apart the flaws of everyone in the congregation. I do. Carlin smiled at her as he said the words. He squeezed the hand he was holding as well. She wondered if he could tell how nervous she was and was trying to help. Do you, insert bride's name here, take Carlin to be your lawfully wedded husband? Carlin leaned toward the pastor. Her name is Hope. That's what I said, Brother Anthony retorted. I do, Hope replied, biting her lip to stifle her laughter. I don't think you need to repeat anything after me, since you both said, I do. So you're man and wife now. Kiss her, you fool. Carlin leaned down and brushed his lips across hers, keeping the kiss soft and gentle. He slipped his arm around her shoulders and turned toward their families gathered there. We'll get rings later, he whispered. Hope nodded, very much at ease, after the wedding. Brother Anthony was a real gem. The others crowded around them, hugging them both. Linda held Hope for a moment longer than the others. I have a daughter. Hope laughed. I hope I live up to your expectations. Of course you will. Linda turned and hurried into the kitchen, pulling out two trays of finger foods. I had a feeling at least one of the boys would marry today, so I made these last night. Lachille grinned. I knew it would be Carlin. He's not the patient sort, is he? Not true. Carlin protested. He looked at Hope. Okay, so it's true. But I try. Hope grinned at him, liking the look in his eyes. I appreciate all efforts. Especially if they're geared toward being patient with me. She walked over and picked up a tiny sandwich from the platter on the counter, taking a bite. This is good. Carlin watched her, and watched the way she interacted with her sisters and his mother, as well as Lachille. It seemed she didn't even notice his brothers. You know, I should probably introduce you to my brothers, and it might be a good idea for me to meet your sisters, he said softly, his lips against her ear. Hope felt a tingle rush through her body at his innocent gesture. Sounds smart. She motioned for her sisters to come close. This is faith, she said. This is joy. Joy waved. And that's chastity. Hope said a silent prayer that chastity would, just this once, keep her mouth shut. Carlin smiled at all of them, before turning to his brothers. That's Cooper and Colby. The two of them are completely dedicated to the ranch. And that's Chris. He's a science teacher. Really? A science teacher? Hope was surprised, but she wasn't sure why. All four brothers looked like they belonged on a ranch. Do you help out on the ranch as well? Chris nodded. Of course. I only work during the school year. I'm an itinerant teacher, going from homeschooled family to homeschooled family, 
teaching the higher level sciences. I've never heard of that as an occupation. Very interesting. Chris kind of invented his own job, Carlin said, obviously dismissing his brother. What did you do back home? Well, I don't even know where back home was. Mom just told me in her text earlier that you'd traveled 1,300 miles, but she didn't say from which direction. Hope laughed, taking his hand and leading him to the sofa, where she sat close beside him. Back home is Kentucky. We were in a small town, near Paducah. My sisters and I weren't allowed to work. We occupied our time with crafts. Not allowed to work? The words came from Linda. Why weren't you allowed to work? Hope smiled sardonically. Our parents believed that a single female's job is to find a man to marry. They didn't think any girls should work on starting a career when they'd just be required to quit as soon as children were born. Carlin frowned. Why would you be required to quit when you had children? Because a woman's place is in the kitchen, of course. Hope shook her head. Faith makes dolls, and I've always sewn clothes for them. I also volunteer a lot of time with children. I teach Sunday school at our church. I work with kids after school. I volunteer in the local schools, doing whatever anyone needs. I do what it takes to keep busy. How did your parents expect you to occupy your time? Searching for a husband, of course. What else would we do? He blinked a couple of times. Are you serious? Is anyone really that backward in today's world? Hope sighed. Only my parents. Don't worry. I don't expect to be a wastrel. He shook his head. I don't care if you work. We don't really need the money, and it's always nice to have laundry done and dinner ready and whatever else women do when they're home all day. But, if you want to work, you can work. I have no desire to control you that way. She smiled sweetly. I may just take you up on that. The front door banged open, slamming against the wall. Carlin immediately stood when he saw his cousin, Travis, standing there. What do you want? Travis's eyes focused on Carlin. I see you decided to follow Granddaddy's will to the letter. Married already? You're not going to get this ranch. The way the will was worded, those who were married would inherit the ranch. Travis was married. I'm married now too. You know as well as I do, I don't want your stupid ranch. In fact, what I really want is for the ranch to be sold. I want my share. We're not selling the ranch. Carlin yelled, before he realized he'd even raised his voice. How can you want us to sell off the ranch that's been in our family since the 1880s? Don't you want your children to understand their heritage? Why would I care? I want the cash. Sell off a fifth of it. Carlin shook his head. We're not selling off one square inch of dirt. This whole place belongs to Culpepper's. After 130 years, it's going to keep belonging to Culpepper's. I've contacted a lawyer, you know. Travis studied his nails as he spoke. I'm taking you four boys to court. You've got six months to buy me out, or I'm going to insist on a sellout. He waved before turning and leaving. Colby took off toward the front door. Carlin ran and grabbed his brother's arm. Don't give him the pleasure. I'm going to kick his citified butt. That man doesn't know what a real man does with his time. No, he's not getting our ranch. Carlin sighed. He's not getting the ranch. I don't know how we're going to come up with that kind of cash in six months, but he's not getting our ranch. He rubbed the back of his neck. They could easily come up with about a fifth of the money necessary. He didn't want to mortgage the ranch, but he would if he had to. Travis was not getting a single acre. Colby closed his eyes and nodded. He's not getting it. You're right. Kicking his butt would do no good. No, it wouldn't. We're just going to have to figure out how to make a little more money. 
Hope looked at Faith. Faith nodded. Chastity and Joy walked over to Hope, each putting a hand on her shoulder. They may not have been allowed to use them for making money, but all the sisters had skills. Their men were about to wonder what hit them. They were going to help save the ranch. Out of the corner of her eye, Hope saw Linda watching them. She'd help them. Hope was sure of it. Monday, the four of them would sit down and have a meeting. In the meantime, it would be Hope's job to crunch some numbers. Chapter 4 Much later that evening, Carlin drove Hope and her SUV over to his house. The men had unpacked the vehicle, putting Joy, Faith, and Chastity's things into the house first. Hope had left her things in the vehicle, ready to get them into her permanent home. When he stopped in front of his house, he led her to the door, surprising her when he swung her up in his arms and carried her over the threshold. Hope let out a gasp of surprise, not having expected that. He set her down in the living room, leaning down to kiss her softly. Welcome home, wife. Hope smiled, leaning into him. I think I'm going to like it here. He smiled, tapping her nose with his index finger. You explore, while I bring your stuff in. Hope wandered through the house. It wasn't big, but it wasn't tiny either. There were three bedrooms and two bathrooms. She went into his room first, eyeing the big bed for a moment. Soon she'd be sleeping there with her husband. Shaking her head, she walked away. She wasn't going to start obsessing about sex like chastity. She went into his bathroom, looking around. There were two sinks, and a separate shower and bathtub. The bathtub was a huge one, and she looked forward to soaking in it. Next she went into the kitchen. It was large with an island in the middle and well laid out. She'd be able to cook there comfortably. The living area looked like it was designed for comfort. There was a cozy sectional sofa and a large screen TV. From there, she went down the hall, to the other two bedrooms. There was a bathroom in between. One room had a full-sized bed and a small dresser. The other had a desk. Hope decided her sewing machine could go in there. She'd start making the outfits for Faith's babies just as soon as she could. They had to help out the men. And she had some thoughts about how she could make money on her own as well. Yes, there would be no problem paying off that awful cousin. Carlin carried her suitcases and boxes into her room, making several trips. How did you get all this stuff here? he asked. She shrugged. We shipped a lot ahead to your mom's house, but we also strapped the suitcases on top of the car and put the boxes in the back. We probably should have strapped chastity to the top, but it didn't seem like an option at the time. He chuckled, setting down the last of her boxes into her room. That's done. Anything more coming? She bit her lip. Well, our younger sisters are shipping the rest of the stuff. Younger sisters? There are more of you. Hope nodded. Grace and Honor are twins. Didn't I tell you that? I thought I had. They're still at home in Kentucky. I wish you had two more brothers for them. I hate that they're still stuck at home with mom and dad. It really doesn't sound like a place I'd want to be. We'll figure something out for them. He patted her arm. Do you need help unpacking? She was still in her bridal gown, and he knew she needed to change out of it soon. She shook her head. No, I'll go ahead and change. Are you hungry? We had snacks at your mom's, but I can cook something. He nodded. A little. Are you a good cook? She laughed. I have a degree in homemaking. Did you know that's even something you can get a degree in today? Well, you can. Why did you get a degree in homemaking? It was your choice, wasn't it? It's all our parents would allow. I managed to minor in accounting but my parents didn't know that until after I'd graduated. I'm glad you're here and not under their rule any longer. He pulled her to him, kissing her forehead. I'm ready to have a wife. 
She smiled. Let's go see how well stocked your kitchen is. I may have to buy groceries before I can cook. He shrugged. I have some basics, but really not much. She spent a minute in the kitchen taking inventory. Okay, I can do bacon and eggs with toast. Or French toast. An omelette. Not much else. I'll hit the grocery store Monday. Are we going to church tomorrow? She was actually excited at the idea. She'd never wanted to go back home, because the pastor had been so negative in his sermons. Brother Anthony would be a treat to listen to, though. He shook his head. Not this week. We'll go next. Brother Anthony made sure I knew if we went to church tomorrow, he'd have to assume I wasn't man enough to keep you occupied. Of course, he called you my new wife instead of Hope. I don't think he knows your name yet. Hope giggled. Probably not. At least he didn't call me insert bride's name again. He loves his congregation. He'd have to. No one would have him otherwise. Carlin leaned against the counter, watching her as she cooked. What did you decide to make? I'm making omelets. If you want something else, now is the time to say something. Omelets sound good. He watched as she efficiently cracked eggs into a bowl and used a fork to mix them. Her movements were practiced. You seem to have done this before. She rolled her eyes. Oh, once or twice. Mom made sure we were all ready to be wives. That means knowing how to cook the perfect breakfast for our husbands. You've led an interesting life. No, I haven't. That's the problem. She deftly folded the omelet, standing over it, watching it cook. Five minutes later, they sat down, and he took a bite of his omelet. You're good at this cooking thing. Forget getting a job. Just keep cooking for me. Hope dropped her fork. You said I could do whatever I wanted. I'm kidding. It was my way of complimenting you on your cooking. He was shocked to see that her face had turned white. I'm not going to try to control you. I promise. Hope nodded, picking her fork back up. He'd shocked her with his words. I hope not. That's the one thing I can't stand for. He reached out and took her hand in his. You won't be asked to. I promise. You can cook for me, you can go get a job in town, or you can start your own business. Whatever you want to do, you can do with my full support. Thank you. Carlin sighed. That was really in poor taste and I'm sorry. I thought you'd know I was joking. When you think about where I've come from, why would you think I would understand that? You're right. I shouldn't have said it. They finished the rest of their meal in silence, and when they were finished, Hope immediately cleared the table and loaded the dishwasher before joining him in the living room. She sat beside him on the couch, curling her feet under her. Carlin's arm immediately went around her shoulders and he pulled her to him, his brain working at how he could talk her into his bed that night. He'd promised to not push anything, so if she said no, he'd have to stop. But oh, how he didn't want her to say no. He found a repeat of Friends and put it on the TV, sure that she had seen it a million times like the rest of the country. Hope found herself glued to the television immediately, her eyes wide. What show is this? She'd never been allowed to watch anything where there had been allusions to the fact sex existed, and here were characters openly talking about erogenous zones. You've never seen Friends? He stared at her in disbelief. Where did you say you're from? She shrugged. My parents were very strict with us. When we went to college, we weren't allowed to live in the dorms. They knew what time we were out of classes and expected us home exactly an hour later. They bought us one vehicle to share between us, putting it in my name. All of us were in the same classes. My first kiss was this afternoon on your mother's porch swing. He gaped at her. Your first kiss ever? Not just your first kiss with me? 
how was that even possible? Yes, my first ever. Joy has never been kissed either, and I don't think Faith has. What about chastity? Shouldn't she be the one who's never been kissed? Hope smiled ruefully. She's always talked about rising above her name. She never met a man she didn't want to kiss. How did she manage to kiss men when the rest of you couldn't find a way? The rest of U.S. didn't find the idea of saving ourselves for marriage repulsive. Only chastity. So she's been with men? Carlin asked. Hope shook her head. Oh, never. She didn't have that much freedom. The rest of U.S. didn't find ways to kiss the boys under the bleachers at school though. Chastity did. I spent most of my formative years coming up with excuses for why chastity was missing. I didn't have time to pursue a relationship of my own. No wonder you want some time. He shook his head. I don't know if I'm pleased or disappointed. Why would you be disappointed? You knew I wanted time to get used to the idea of being married. I was hoping I could talk you into changing your mind. She laughed. Not a chance. To be honest with you, the idea of sex with someone I love is kind of scary. The idea of sex with a man I met this afternoon is absolutely petrifying. No, we won't be having sex this week. Probably not next week either. He sighed. All right. Do I get to try to persuade you though? I mean, I think I should at least have that opportunity. She blushed, but nodded. You absolutely have that right. He leaned down and kissed her softly. Then I will take that right. I want our marriage to be a real one as soon as possible. I'm not going to make you wait years or anything. Just let me get used to kissing you and touching you before we go beyond that. I can deal with that idea. He grabbed her around the waist and pulled her onto his lap, kissing her passionately. This is how I mean to persuade you, just so you know. She laughed. I reckoned as much. She felt tingles rush up her spine. Her belly tightened as he kissed her. You make my insides feel all funny. Glad to hear it, he whispered against her lips. He desperately wanted to touch her breast, but he forced his hand to stay at her waist. She didn't need to be rushed into anything. He could just sit there and kiss her for hours. Hope pulled away from him mid-kiss, to stifle a yawn. Three days on the road were finally catching up with her. I'm sorry. She didn't want him to think she found his kisses boring because really, the opposite was true. I understand. You drove a long way to get here. He kissed her one last time. Why don't you head off to your bed? Mornings start very early on a ranch. How early, she asked. She'd always been an early riser, up at seven even when she didn't have to be. I'm usually up by five, he said. I doubt I will be tomorrow because no one is going to expect me to work. He frowned for a moment. Would you promise me something? What's that? Don't tell anyone we're waiting to have sex. I don't want my brothers to know about that yet. Hope nodded. I would never embarrass you that way. I wouldn't trust my sisters not to say anything, so it'll be between us. She pressed a kiss against his lips, before standing. Besides, I don't think it will last very long anyway. I sure hope not. Carlin got to his feet. It seems strange to say goodnight to my bride in the living room. She smiled. It seems strange to your bride as well. Give me a little time. She pressed her lips against his and wandered away down the hall, toward the bathroom. She needed to shower and brush her teeth. Then she had to put her things away. No matter how tired she was, she'd been taught not to leave her things out that way, so she would put them up before bed. She could sleep in a little tomorrow. No one would expect a new bride to be up and around so early. Asterisk. It was after midnight when Hope fell into bed, so she slept much later than she'd planned. 
When she finally got up at 8.30, she found that Carlin had left her a note explaining where he was. Hope? I didn't want to wake you, so I made myself cereal. I'm out working on fences with my brothers, but I'll be back at noon for lunch, and we'll spend the afternoon together. Get some rest. I'm going to tell my brothers that I wore you out so much, I'm letting you spend the morning resting. Keep the story going for me, would you? Your husband. Carlin. She smiled at the note, taking it into her room and putting it in the drawer of her nightstand. As soon as she opened the drawer, she frowned. She hadn't known where else to put the lingerie and elephant-sized vibrator Chastity had gotten her. She didn't want anyone to see it, so she was afraid to even throw the thing away. She put the note on top of it and shut the drawer. She'd think about it another time. She wanted to get to the big house before lunchtime so she could talk to her sisters about the ranch's financial situation. She wanted to be able to help, and she knew that with the combined powers of her and her sisters, they could do a lot. She hurried to dress and brush her teeth, and then walked over to Linda's house. She didn't know if the others had gone to church, but she had a feeling they were all too tired after the long drive they'd made. She knocked on the door, and Linda opened it, a smile lighting up her face. Good morning, Hope. Good morning. Are my sisters up yet? We're just sitting down to breakfast. Have you eaten? Hope shook her head. Actually I haven't. I slept in, and Carlin was gone before I woke. He made himself cereal. I'm not surprised. That car trip took a lot out of you girls. Sit down and eat with us. Linda waved her hand at the table where her three sisters and Lachille were sitting, eating breakfast. Hope walked over and took an unoccupied chair. There was a veritable feast on the table, including scrambled eggs, sausage, bacon, hash browns, biscuits, and gravy. She fixed her plate while she thought about how to approach the subject of finances with her sisters. I've been thinking, she said, and her three sisters gave her their full attention. She'd always been a leader for the others, especially where financial matters were concerned. The others had a mental block where math was concerned, barely making it through their required college courses, and she handled their money for the most part. I'm willing to use my full power to help, Faith said softly, knowing what her sister was about to say. They all fought sometimes, but they were quadruplets. They had a very special bond. Hope nodded. I knew you'd say that, but I think we'll need more. She looked at the other two. Joy nodded. My yarn, canvas, and patterns are here. I'm opening up an Etsy shop tonight, and I'll start an eBay account as well. I know plastic canvas Barbie doll furniture and buildings may sound strange, but I'm good. People are going to buy my stuff. Hope put her hand over Joy squeezing her sister's fingers. She turned her attention to Chastity. Chastity smiled. I'm going to knit socks. Special socks. She leaned closer to Hope, who was sitting beside her. I'm going to find other stuff to make, too. Hope closed her eyes before nodding. She just hoped Chastity didn't get too creative with whatever she made. Can you share Joy's Etsy account and eBay? Absolutely. Chastity grinned. I can't wait to get started. I'm going to start a daycare in our house. I'm sure there are plenty of local families who need childcare, Hope announced. Linda looked around at the sisters. Are you doing this to help with finances? Of course, Hope answered quickly. We'll do anything we can to help, and these are the things we're good at. Use my house for the childcare then. I'll help with the children. I'll help with any of the projects. I prefer to paint, but I'm very crafty. Hope nodded, a smile covering her face. Sounds good to me. I think if the parents know that you'll be here, it'll be easier for them to sign their kids up for Culpepper Care. You have my full backing with any of the projects. Linda said, obviously excited that the girls were planning to help. Just tell me what I need to do. 
Hope smiled. We'll do it together. Everything starts tomorrow. Chapter 5 Hope and her sisters did the breakfast dishes, as much to have time to talk privately as anything else. Faith, you should really tell Linda about your babies. She's going to be supportive. You know that. Faith shuddered. You know, I want to. I'm so used to hiding it that I feel like I should at least for a little while longer. I'll tell her soon. I promise. Hope sighed. I think we need to just come clean about everything with them. This family is so different than mom and dad. Linda seems to actually care what we have to say and realizes we have personalities. She's not grouping us all together as the quads. I want to sit and talk to her and spill my guts. Feel free. Just don't spill your guts on my secret. That's my place. She knows you make dolls. She knows you're going to sell them to help pay off the family's debt. Why not just tell her everything? Hope really didn't understand her sister's worries about being honest. I'm not doing it. Faith bent over to keep loading the dishwasher. Not yet, anyway. Hope sighed. Whatever. When they finished, the sisters all went into the living room to join Linda and Lachiel. I think you owe me a story, Hope said. I want to know about how Wiggyville got its name. Linda smiled. Well, I know the story, but I don't know how much of it is historically accurate. Back in the 1860s or 1870s, no one is sure which, there was a new settlement in Texas, between modern-day Dalton and Stephenville. A woman lived there with her children, and when her oldest son married, his wife had a little boy. Now that little boy, for reasons known only to him, called his grandmother Wiggy, and he told stories about that grandmother as if she was some sort of superhero. He thought she could do absolutely anything, and she was the most wonderful woman alive. When it came time for the town to be named, the boy kept begging for the town to be called Wiggyville. No one had a better suggestion, and everyone had started calling the woman Wiggy, so they all agreed. The town has had the same name ever since. Hope grinned. I like that story. I still think I want my grandma name to be Wiggy, if that's all right with you four girls. Of course, if the grandkids start calling me something else, well, that's fine too. They can call me pretty much anything they want. Chastity grinned at Hope. Just think, you could be pregnant right now. I hope your wedding night was everything I dreamed it could be. Hope elbowed Chastity, refusing to discuss it. I think that's a lovely idea. If the kids want to call you Wiggy, that's great. If they want to call you something else, I think they should. I agree. It'll be like I'm getting a surprise that way. Who could complain about getting a surprise from her grandbabies? Hope glanced at the clock and saw that it was after 11. Oops. I'm supposed to make lunch for Carlin and have it ready at noon. He doesn't even have any food. Linda laughed. The boys always come here when they get hungry. She walked to the fridge. Carlin loves grilled cheese sandwiches made with pimento cheese. She gave Hope everything she'd need to make the sandwiches. Does he have butter? Or should I send some? Hope laughed. No, he has butter. Maybe some chips? I'll replace whatever when I go to the store tomorrow. Oh, no need. And you two come here for supper tonight. I'm sure he doesn't have what you'd need to make a real meal. We had omelets for dinner last night, so we'll need to take you up on that. Linda packed everything into a paper sack and handed it to Hope. There. I don't need anything back, but I might send you with a short list for the grocery store tomorrow. I wouldn't mind a bit. I'll need to stop by before I go anyway. I need to know where to apply for a daycare license and all that good stuff. We're going to make sure Travis doesn't force the men to sell. Linda shook her head. I hope we can keep from selling off even a portion of the ranch. The boys are very proud of this place. Hope hugged Linda tightly. 
We'll be back for dinner, or if not, we'll text and let you know. Sounds good. Linda watched Hope leave with a smile on her face, before turning back to the others. Asterisk. At exactly noon, Hope put four grilled cheese sandwiches on a plate and shut off the stove. She carried the plate to the table and looked at the Cheetos she'd poured into a bowl. It certainly wasn't the type of meal she'd ever expected to cook for her husband, but she could make do with whatever was on hand. The door opened and Carlin walked in, his shirt unbuttoned, and sweat dripping down his chest. Hope couldn't tear her eyes away. She'd never thought she would be the type to fall for a muscle-bound cowboy, but one look at her new husband, and she knew she'd been wrong. Maybe it was just this particular muscle-bound cowboy, but she found she wanted to go over and lick one of the rivulets of sweat off his chest. As soon as she thought about licking him, a blush slowly creeped across her face until she felt like it was burning. What do you want to drink with lunch? She asked, looking down to hide her embarrassment. Carlin grinned. Now what is that blush about, wife? He asked, striding across the entryway and dining room to where she stood. I don't know what you mean, she fibbed. He put a finger under her chin and lifted her face up to his. She was a tall woman, the tallest of all her sisters at 5'9", but he was so much bigger. Why he had to be 6'3 or so? What are you embarrassed about? She shook her head, knowing she couldn't tell him what she'd been thinking. Nothing. He leaned down and pressed his lips against hers. She immediately wrapped her arms around him, her hands going under his open shirt to stroke his bare back. Tell me. What do you want to drink with your lunch? She asked, as soon as he lifted his mouth. You're really not going to tell me? Nope. We're married, not joined at the brain. He sighed. Sweet tea is fine if there's some made. She nodded. I made some while I was making sandwiches. There's really nothing here for me to cook for supper, so your mom invited us to eat there. He shrugged. That's fine, I guess. I would rather spend the time alone, but I will get hungry. We could walk over and just stay for the meal and leave. That works. She poured them each a glass of tea, before taking a chair. He sat in the same place he had the night before. You should have woken me up this morning. I would have made breakfast for you. He shook his head. I peeked in at you and saw everything you did last night, before bed. There was no way I was going to wake you. You could have. My mom has always gotten up and cooked a good meal for our family in the mornings. That's what I was expecting to do. She felt bad that she'd slept late. Instead, I went over to your mom's and had breakfast there. I'm glad you're getting along well with mom. She has some friends in town, but we're far enough out that she doesn't make it in often. Carlin took a bite of his sandwich. Your grilled cheese is just as good as mom's. She gave me the ingredients and told me how you like them. I'm going to have to do some grocery shopping tomorrow if you want me to keep feeding you. He frowned. I'm a little worried about money. The whole thing with Travis is scary. I don't want to sell off part of the ranch. I don't want to take out a mortgage on it, and we don't have a lot of ready cash. She reached over and took his hand. My sisters and I discussed it this morning. We're all going to do everything we can to help. He raised an eyebrow. She had never worked a day in her life. How did she think she could help? How? Well, I'm going to start a daycare at your mom's. We're calling it Culpepper Care. Faith is going to sell the doll she makes. She hated that she couldn't just come out and tell him that her sister had been selling them for years and making a tidy profit off them too. Joy is going to make plastic canvas Barbie stuff and sell it. Chastity is going to knit socks and other stuff. And you really think your crafts will make a difference for us? Hope shrugged. Depends on how hard we work them. We can certainly make enough to help. If we all cut corners at the same time, maybe we can manage without a mortgage or anything. 
I appreciate it, Carlin told her, looking like he was dubious. Really, what did she know about making money when she'd never even worked? After the lunch dishes were done, Carlin took her hand and pulled her into his room. This is my first Sunday afternoon off in forever. I'm going to use it wisely. Oh, really? How are you going to do that? Hope was surprised he'd brought her into his room. I'm taking a nap with my new wife. Hope felt her heart jump into her throat. I'm not ready for that. I didn't say I was making love to you. I said I'm taking a nap with you. He pushed his shirt off his shoulders and kicked off his boots. Pulling a pair of clean shorts out of a drawer, he tossed her a t-shirt. I'll go in the bathroom and put shorts on. I can sleep in those, and you sleep in the shirt. He went into the bathroom and Hope sprang into action, quickly stripping and putting the shirt on, carefully keeping her back to the bathroom door so he wouldn't see her if he came out unexpectedly. She debated keeping her bra on, but it was too uncomfortable to sleep in. So what if he saw the outline of her nipples? He was her husband. She was under the covers when he came out of the bathroom, and he smiled when he saw the stack of neatly folded clothes on the dresser. He slid into bed beside her, moving to the middle and gathering her into his arms. I really am planning to sleep. I just want to do it while holding my new wife. You know, like people sleep holding teddy bears. She laughed. I've never been compared to a child stuffed toy, but okay. I guess that works. He kissed her briefly, before resting his head on the pillow. She put her head on his shoulder. This feels nice, he said. He liked holding her. He'd like it if she'd let him whip out his ding a ling a lot more, but for now, he'd be content to hold her. Hope smiled. I feel like I'm doing something wrong just being in your bed. I think I may have some hang-ups about sex. He grinned. I bet I can help you work through them. Want to start now? Or later? She laughed. Later is probably better for me. I really am tired. She never took naps, because she was always busy, but napping in his arms sounded blissful. Good night, Carlin. He kissed the tip of her nose. Good night, Hope. Asterisk. Hope woke to find herself on her side facing away from Carlin, her bottom nestled against his groin. There was definitely something going on there. She started to ease away from him when his arms tightened around her and he pulled her right back. Where do you think you're going? He asked, his lips against her ear, causing shivers to run down her spine. I thought you were still asleep, she said. I was going to get up and go do something useful. She had planned to cut out some of the little Halloween outfits. She'd already bought the fabric. She'd always found that if she cut out all of one type of outfit at once, things went quicker for her. He brushed her hair out of the way, before kissing the side of her neck, biting it gently. You're useful right where you are, darling Dot. His voice was filled with Texas for the first time since she'd met him. She shivered. Not as useful as I could be out there, she said. You know we have to make a baby, right? He asked softly. He didn't know what all she'd been told about the provisions of the will, but he did want her to understand. Now? She asked, her voice barely squeaking out. Carlin's deep laugh filled the room. No, not right this second. Unless you want to, of course. Hope sighed. When then? Soon. One of the provisions of my grandfather's will was that all four of us had to get married for any of us to inherit. And then one of us has to have a baby on the way within a year. If none of us has a baby on the way, then we forfeit the ranch and it goes to Travis. She shuddered at the thought. Why Travis? He's our cousin. He's been married for five years has two of the worst-behaved children I've ever seen. The will says he gets a tenth of the profits of the ranch forever, unless he chooses to help work it, in which case he gets a fifth. Will he help work it? She asked. 
not for all the gold in Fort Knox. The man is the laziest human being I've ever met. He's afraid of horses. His voice was filled with disgust as he said the words. Hope frowned. I don't know how to ride. I've never been on a horse. That's different. You weren't on a ranch for an entire month every summer growing up. You didn't have a grandfather who was dying to teach you how to ride. No, I didn't. I would like to learn. I'll teach you at the same time I teach our first child. So, you want to make a baby now? She blushed at his words. Was he going to ask her that every time they talked? Not yet. Soon. He sighed dramatically. I was sure it wouldn't hurt to ask, but you know what? It did. It always hurts to be rejected. She giggled, rolling over so she faced him. She felt his erection against her leg as she rolled, knowing he must be uncomfortable, but he still treated her with respect. She could get used to being married to a man like him. How can I make it up to you? He raised an eyebrow and a slow grin spread across his face. I have several ideas. I was thinking I could make your favorite dinner tomorrow night. Not whatever it is you're thinking. Well, Dagnabbit. I wasn't thinking about food at all. I'm sure you weren't. He took one finger and traced it down the side of her face, along her collarbone, and down her shirt. He moved it to her nipple and gently stroked her through the thin white fabric. Your beautiful, wife. Hope blushed. Want to know what I was thinking earlier? When I blushed? Yes. Are you ready to tell me now? I was thinking you looked really sexy with your shirt open and sweat dripping. I kind of wanted to lick your chest. Carlin grinned, a slow sexy smile that tied her stomach in knots. Anytime, sugar. Hope leaned forward and licked his chest, right above his nipple. Salty. I didn't think you'd really do it. She laughed. I maybe be inexperienced, but I'm very curious. I like how you taste. He groaned. Don't tell me that. I'm already so turned on, I feel like I'm going to break. Oh? She didn't know what had gotten into her, but she leaned forward and sucked at his neck for a moment, before pulling away. I think I'm going to like this marriage thing. So am I. Just as soon as you let me strip you and introduce you to Charlie. Charlie? My ding-a-ling, of course. He's ready to meet you now, if you're interested. Hope pushed away from him. I think I'm going to go get a shower and work for a little while. I promised Faith I'd make some clothes for her baby dolls. He watched as she rolled to a sitting position, grabbed her clothes, and rushed from the room. His shirt hit her mid-thigh, and he wanted to chase after her and throw her onto the nearest bed. Or floor. Or table. Or counter. He didn't care where it happened. Just so it happened. What was it about that sweet little thing that kept his body in knots and his ding-a-ling hard enough to chop down a tree? She was pretty special all right.